So, does anyone here be knowing how to read? And there were some groans and cursing, and I realized maybe it had been a mistake to be killing all the educated officers. In any case, with our treasure quest at a momentary standstill, there was nothing to do but get three sheets to the wind. So Rotten Pete broke into the captain's berth by smashing the door down with his face, and we drank up all the grog and sang ourselves some shanties, with me singing the main parts and Rotten Pete doing all the harmonies, and we were trying to work out a difficult bridge section when we heard a strange howling noise coming from the deck. It could only mean one thing. We had ourselves a stowaway. Now, me and Rotten Pete don't take too kindly to freeloaders, so as soon as we heard his yapping, we loaded up our pistols with the hardest bullets we could find and went up to blow the man down. The wailing was coming from a broken crate of sugar biscuits, and we were gearing up to blast the thing to bits when some clouds parted aloft. And in the white bright moonlight, we could see two little eyes peering up at us. And that's when we noticed the stowaway be a little girl. She was smaller than a seaman's duffel, with a tiny freckled face and a scraggly mess of hair as wild as a clump of kelp. She wore the rags of a street urchin, and her body was smeared with crumbs and bits of sugar. She'd wandered on board from the docks, we guessed, to get at all the biscuits. And now here she was, stuck with us pirates at sea. Now, I expected her to cower at the sight of us because she be so small and we be so big and also we be pirates. But instead, when she saw us, her lips stopped their quivering and she sniffled a few times and blinked away her tears. And then, very slow-like, she held up her arms, squeezed her chubby fists, and looked me in me eye and said, Up? And Rotten Pete turned to me slowly and said, Arr, I think she be asking you to pick her up. And I shook me head and snorted and said, Arr, that be ridiculous. And Rotten Pete said, Arr, why does it be ridiculous? And I reminded him that I don't heed orders from any living man. I would sooner cut a hundred throats. that be like one of me main things. And Rotten Pete said, Ah, but it's not a man. It'd be a little girl. And I said, if he wanted to pick her up, that'd be his business. And he said, Ah, then I guess I will be the one of us picking her up, even though I'd be having a hook hand and it'd be harder for me to be lifting things. And I knew he'd be trying to be passive-aggressive, but I did not say anything, because when he'd be doing that, I'd just be ignoring it. And so Rotten Pete picked up the small girl, and we took her to our berth, and we wrapped her in a blanket and dried off her face and we stared at her for a while, not really sure what to do, because we'd been through squalls and mutinies together, been shipwrecked, shot, marooned, and left for dead. But having a kid be different. It's like there be no manual for this. And then the small girl started talking. And she said that she be three years old and that she be hungry for more biscuits. And Rotten Pete pulled me aside and said, Arr, what do you think? Should we be giving her more biscuits? She has already been eating a lot of biscuits today. Maybe we only give her half a biscuit and also be making her say please first? And I said, What the hell is going on? We be pirates! We should just throw her overboard and feed her to the sharks. And Rotten Pete winced and said, Arr, come on, we can't be doing that. And I asked him if he be getting soft, and he said, Arr, no, I just be thinking, you know, if we toss her overboard at night, the sharks will come, and they might crack the hull open with their fins. So I groaned and said, Fine. She can stay aboard tonight, but there's no way she be sleeping in our berth. And he said, Arr, then where will we be putting her? And I said, Arr, we can just stick her in the hold. And he said, Arr, it be dark down there. She will be scared and scream. And I said, Oh.